Today we're talking 10 dietary steps to help you prevent and manage kidney disease. Stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching today. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, click that bell so you never miss a new recipe or a new health tip. My name is Dr. Blake Schusterman. I'm a board certified kidney doctor and I'm also the cooking doc. And everything we talk about today is for informational purposes only. This is for you to learn. This is not medical advice. Today we're going to talk straight kidneys and we're going to go through the 10 steps that I talk about in my book of things that you should know and understand to help you manage your kidney disease. These are also things that will help you protect your kidneys if you're at risk for kidney disease and you want to know what you should be doing. Or if you just woke up this morning and you said, huh, how am I going to keep my kidneys healthy for the rest of my life? Well, I've got you covered. Step one is understanding your kidneys. The first step in solving any problem or confronting any challenge is understanding what goes on on the inside and the intricacies and details of the thing that you're trying to manage or the thing that you're trying to fix. So understanding as much as you can about your kidneys and how they work is going to be key. For example, did you know that most people are born with two kidneys? You probably did. Did you know that each of those kidneys probably started with a million tiny little filters that help your body filter out the waste products from their day-to-day -day operations. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But these are the kind of things that you should understand in order to help you figure out how you're going to change your diet and manage your day-to-day -day lifestyle to keep your kidneys healthy. Step number two, choose your beverages wisely. If you've watched my show before, you probably know that I think that the safest thing for you to drink is water. But I understand that a lot of people don't like water and they have a tendency to reach for other things when they get thirsty. And that's okay. Things like black coffee and most teas are very safe for people with kidney disease and should not impact your kidneys in the long run. Where people get into trouble is when they start reaching for sugary drinks, Cokes, sweet tea, uh, high sugar energy drinks. Those kind of things can lead to obesity and high blood pressure and put you at risk for kidney disease. So choosing your beverages wisely and reaching for water most of the time is step number two in keeping your kidneys healthy. Step three, uncover hidden salts and hashtag change your buds. Most of us get way more salt than the body needs during the day. And a lot of that salt is from processed foods, things that you get at the grocery store or things that you get when you go out to eat at a restaurant. Don't get me wrong, I love salt. The problem is that we all get too much of it. And that's because it's hidden in so many things that you buy that are already prepared. And also that your taste buds, my taste buds, your taste buds are so conditioned to high salt foods that it feels like you need to really douse the salt shaker or get something that's really high sodium in order for it to taste good. So one of the main keys is to change your taste buds. So you can alter your taste buds so that they are accustomed to foods that have less salt. So you think things that have lower sodium actually taste good. And that can be a first step towards keeping your sodium level your sodium intake down during the day and keeping your kidneys healthy, your blood pressure down and helping to protect yourself for the long run. Number four, embrace plant-based eating. Plant-based eating doesn't necessarily mean vegan. Plant-based eating means eating more fruits and vegetables and whole grains and less red meat and other animal protein. So just by shifting the scales a little bit, you can really make a difference in your overall health and your kidneys it may take a little more work and it may take a little prodding of your family to get them to eat less meat. Incorporate it a day here or there. Meatless Monday or just have a breakfast where you don't eat meat. I mean, sometimes we have to start from scratch. Don't get the sausage. Done. These are the little things that can really jumpstart you to long-term better health. If you have to, start slowly. Make that change happen over time you'll be really surprised with where you can end up in five years if you stick to it. Step number five, get potassium right. Now this is a tough one. High potassium can cause a lot of problems, especially in your heart, and people who have kidneys that don't filter properly are at risk for high potassium in their blood. So some people with kidney disease have to be really careful about how much potassium they eat. On the other hand, there are people who have mild kidney disease, such as stage three kidney disease, who don't need to limit their potassium at all. And in fact, 
if people who don't need to limit their potassium start limiting their potassium, it can make them have a harder time controlling their blood pressure. It can lead them to have less um, fiber in their diet. And more importantly, it can lead them to cut out some of the best foods that they normally eat. Things like tomatoes or tomato sauce and mangoes and cooked spinach. A lot of things that are high potassium are some people's favorite foods. And so you don't want to cut those out unless you have to. So talk to your doctor, review your labs, review your medicines, and that'll help you get potassium right. Now, if you like these steps so far and want to learn more, these are all steps from my book, The Cooking Docs, Kidney Healthy Cooking, A Modern 10-Step Guide to Preventing and Managing Kidney Disease. Here it is. It's available on my website, thecookingdoc.co, or you can also get it on Amazon. Uh. Graphs, pictures, information, recipes, we've got it all. Step number six, avoid high protein pitfalls. Now this is a real tough one because everyone has different protein needs. And some people find that eating more protein allows them to maintain a healthy weight and also may allow them to manage their diabetes better. So the last thing you want your kidney doctor to do is say, you have to go on a low protein diet. Just like potassium, if you are giving up your protein foods and you don't have to, it can lead to decreased quality of life because you're giving up some of your favorite foods. It can make it more difficult to cook on a day-to-day -day basis, and it can just cause added mental stress. If you're thinking about, uh, let's see, how much protein do I need? Is this too much protein? Is this too little protein? Should I leave protein out of my dinner? You know, it can be very complicated. So the things to remember about protein are this. As you get further down in your kidney disease stage, so say you uh, have gone from stage three to stage four to stage five, the further down you are, the more important it is to limit your protein. So it may not be as important for a lot of people with stage three disease, and it may be very important for people with stage five disease who need to really watch what they eat in order to stay off of dialysis. I recommend a dietitian to really help you navigate these things. The other thing to remember about protein is that it may be true that you're better off choosing plant proteins like legumes instead of animal proteins like red meat. We're still sorting through this from a science standpoint, but that's where the data is headed currently. Step number seven, discover alkaline rich foods. Alkaline rich foods tend to put less stress on your kidneys. Now, when I talk about alkaline rich foods, I am not talking about alkaline water. Alkaline water is essentially neutralized in your stomach and has no impact on your kidneys handling of the acid base balance in your blood. When I talk about alkaline rich foods, I'm talking about foods that have a low potential renal acid load or P-R-A-L. That's a mouthful. So what that means is that certain foods get digested in the, in the stomach and the intestines and then get absorbed and go all the way through the kidney. And those foods that have a low potential renal acid load just don't put a lot of stress on the kidneys as they try to process those foods and help keep the acid and base balance in your blood stable. So things that have a low potential renal acid load are things like broccoli and cauliflower and spinach, lots of herbs and spices. And things that have a high potential renal acid load are things like red meats and processed foods like sodas. Those things make your kidneys work extra hard to maintain the acid base balance in your blood. Step number eight, identify and eliminate sneaky phosphorus. This is really important for people who have stage five kidney disease or who are on dialysis and not so important for anyone else. Here's what you need to know about phosphorus. Phosphorus is hidden as a preservative on a lot of foods. So if you look on the label, you can look for the four letters P-H-O-S. That means phosphorus, and that means those foods will have phosphorus that is easy for your body to absorb, and I want you to try to eliminate those or limit those processed foods that have phosphorus in it. The other thing is that dairy foods tend to have a lot of phosphorus in them, so try to limit your dairy intake if you can. 
Again, this is only for people who are on dialysis or who have been told by their dietitian that they have high phosphorus levels. Step number nine, almost there. Try to incorporate the Mediterranean diet or the DASH diet into your daily routine. Now, I'm not going to go through the ins and outs of either one of those diets here, but there are a lot of great sources on the web to learn about the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet. And both of those are very effective at helping you manage your kidney disease and your blood pressure, lowering your risk of cardiovascular disease and stroke. So check out the DASH diet, check out the Mediterranean diet. The last step is if you are on dialysis or if you have developed kidney disease that progresses to kidney failure requiring dialysis, never fear. A lot of your dietary needs will certainly change as you go through the progression and if you end up on dialysis, but there are ways to make a dialysis diet taste good and there are ways to make a dialysis diet livable so that it doesn't rule everything in your life. The last part is that everybody who is on dialysis in the United States has access to a dietitian. So get all the information you can from them and see if they can really help you uh, enjoy a lot of the foods that you still like, even though you may have to limit them if your kidneys aren't working. Okay, so that's it. There's the 10. If you've made it this far, then that's amazing. You are really trying to benefit your health. And boy, as a kidney doctor, there is nothing that makes me happier than people who want to do everything possible to help manage their health. So thank you. Your kidney doctors thank you and your body thanks you. Now, if you want to learn more about any of these things, please check out a copy of my book, The Cooking Docs, Kidney Healthy Cooking, A Modern 10-Step Guide to Preventing and Managing Kidney Disease. You can get the paperback on Amazon or you can get the electronic copy on my website, thecookingdoc.co. Thanks so much for watching. Share this video and like it if you did, and I will see you next time.